So, hello everybody. Um, I would like to uh, encourage you to ask questions uh, at the end of the session. Uh, you can win scars. Uh, our next presenter is member of Red Hat Release Engineering Team and is involved in non-X86 architectures for both RHEL and Fedora. So please welcome Peter Robinson. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk about using OS Tree um, on Fedora um, for IoT. Um, it's going to be a fairly quick presentation with a small, slightly working demo at the end. Um, I should have learned much better by now than actually trying to set up a complex multi-computer with network demo at a conference. Um, but, well, you know, it's, um, it, it, it is what it is and there's not much we can do about it now. So, um, there's been a lot on the news about security of IoT, IoT being Internet of Things or as I prefer to call it, internet of everyone else's things. Um, so we've got fairly good architecture support for a lot of the um, sort of little devices like this one here. And I'm probably going to break my demo before I even start it. Um, and they're being actively used in um, lots of different sort of IoT projects. But they're an interesting case of um, hodgepodge of things just pulled off the internet and thrown together. So I think we could do a IoT spin with um, Project Atomic OS tree stuff to give you know non-brickable devices um, using open protocols and open IoT standards. And, and so that's what I've started to do. And I've had a fair amount of interest, but it is a very vast space with lots of things we could do. Um, so we're just going to initially target three architectures, you know, no pressure. Um, a few of the core upcoming protocols like COPE and MQTT, which is a, a slim down uh, messaging stack, um, and then give the ability to layer sort of bigger projects on top like Node-RED and IOTV. Um, so yeah, target some, um, initially a very small hardware set. Um, in the Fedora ARM project, we currently have support for well over 150 devices and we support some of those better than others. So we figured that um, if we target a small set of initial devices that we can get working really, really well, it should then be much easier to expand it out to um, the much greater um, IoT ecosystem as we go. So yeah, we'll be initially focusing on BeagleBone and Chip, hopefully Raspberry Pi 2. Um, it allegedly has enough of the upstream, in the upstream kernel for 4.5. So, um, fingers crossed, we may be able to add support for that in Fedora 24. Um, and then other devices like the Pine 64, which is a new $15 um, ART64 device, which um, apparently I have waiting for me at home in, in, in my post box. So, um, so, we should have some interesting devices coming along there this Fedora cycle. Um, so, I'll just give a small demo. Um, which will primarily be, um, and it may not be too easy to see on the screen, so we'll see how we go. So just here we're just booting into the um, OS tree. We've uh, discovered, Patrick, who's helped me out on this, and I have discovered a 
number of bugs as we've gone along. And so it's sort of been very much a iterate early, iterate often um, process with the lack of um, conference Wi-Fi not being particularly useful to us for pulling down um, new images. Um, I was going to get it, the Beaglebone I have here to use it as a gateway to speak to this little device, which is a TI sensor tag, um, which is a minuscule device with about 16 sensors, temperature, barometric pressure, um, light, um, X, Y axis, various other, oh, that looks useful. Um, We're not there just yet. <laughs> it's a good start. Oh. What do they say in TV? Never work with animals and small children or computer systems. <laughs> So, so here we are. Don't want to run that first command. Yeah, so here we have um, running OS tree, um, and then so we can see the sensor tag here. I couldn't actually get it working. I basically run out of time. I got the OS tree image. Um, running about an hour before the talk was due to uh, kick off. So it wasn't quite um, there. But we're getting there, and we should have a working image um, with sensor support um, in the next few days, with luck. But um, Yeah, so, so the, the demo was originally going to be this, where we've got a couple of, it ended up basically being this bit here. So we, we're not quite all the way there. Um, but it's working, and by the time F24 goes GA, we should have a sort of tech preview spin for people to actively play around with and start to um, contribute to. Um, so how do you get involved? Um, at the moment, we've got a mailing list and an IRC channel. Um, the um, Git repository has all the atomic bits uh, that we're using to build the image. And um, in the next few days, I'll, um, we'll generate a, start to generate like a nightly rawhide um, OS tree which um, I'll send the details out to the mailing list for people to start play with. And hopefully, shortly thereafter, I'll actually be able to produce nightly sort of arm images. But we have a little bit of, um, or a few things we need to fix there for image creation. So almost there, not quite. Um, so in summary, we're, the plan is to start small with a very focused um, feature set, very focused device set, um, far small incremental improvements to that, um, built um, purely on Atomic, so no DNF install of various functionality. Um, I think this is the right way to go, um, especially for IoT-based devices. Um, we then have the ex potential to expand out from there um, there's been a number of robotics, and there's a very good Fedora robotics spin that um, I've had a number of people ask me about using some of the um, ARM devices with real-time uh, PRUs and things like that, and whether they could, whether we could support robotics and things like that on it. Sure, if um, 
I don't think I have the skill set to actually make robots fly. I think they would just crash and burn. Um, so it's probably not the best person, but um, absolutely um, would love to see people doing that sort of stuff um, on Fedora. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we'll have a um, preview coming for F24. So anyone got any questions? I have some cool scarves to give out here. Yes, I am. <laughs> Is the integration of Atomic something that's hardware specific? Is it or is it not? In other words, could we use the atomic update element of what you're doing independent of the IoT components because that might be useful too? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, there, there's nothing particularly hardware specific. And like this image that we're running here will run on pretty much any of the ARM devices that we support in Fedora. Um, and you know, there's, we won't be doing anything to stop it running on any devices, but we'll be just focusing um, feature-wise and things like that on specific devices because, um, but, you know, everything we support in Fedora will be uh, supportable this way. Cool. Anyone else? Over here. Sorry? <laughs> Do you have any early ideas on what you're going to do with the little TI sensor? Like, um, so, so this TI sensor tag is kind of cool in that um, it's got a 2.4 gig wireless on it and you can upload different firmwares into it. Um, so the firmware it's got at the moment is a Bluetooth smart firmware that supports Bluetooth 4. Um, I've heard rumours that they're going to add uh, Bluetooth 4.2 support, which will give us the ability to run um, 6 low WPAN, which is a reduced IPv6 stack over it. And you can also put in a generic 802.15.4, um, which is a runs across 2.4 gigahertz range as well, but enables full meshing and to run 6 W low pan across it. Um, so it's a Cortex M3 processor, so we can't run a full-blown Linux on it, um, but at the same time, it runs off a cell battery, and you can do that for a year. So um, basically, the plan is to be able to support um, the IoT, like the Fedora build as a sort of gateway to speak to these sort of devices, as well as interact with the sensors directly on, um, plugged into the um, devices as well. Anyone else? Okay. can track my luggage. So when I arrive at my destination, I have everything I need. Yeah, so we could... Um, the, the, I was about... Um, yeah, so the question is how we can use IoT and something like this to um, track his damn luggage that the, that the airport seems to lose. Um, yeah, so y you could quite easily put together a little device with probably a cell phone um, chip and SIM... Um, you'd, as long as you're happy to pay uh, international roaming. Um, and, and then we basically have GPS logging and, and, and you can upload it. And you could probably even put a camera on it so you can take photos of the idiots that are um, losing it. <laughs> Smile! <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, any further questions? Yeah. What are you doing in the space of the heartbeat of those devices? Sorry? What are you doing in the space of monitoring the heartbeat of those devices? The heartbeat of which devices? All connected devices. Um, do you mean as to 
whether they're up and operational. Yeah, so the idea is that um, they have watchdog devices on board. So if you do a um, atomic OS tree upgrade and it fails um, to boot into the new version, you can reboot back to the old one, or if the device locks up, you can trigger the, the watchdog will trigger to reset it and boot back to a known good config. Does that answer the question? I mean, that's a nice thing of um, OS tree is that you can have multiple versions and, and so if you do an upgrade, you set a boot once flag and it reboots and if it boots up and doesn't go into the new version um, and like planning on having a little daemon that will do like some health checks once the new version boots. So can I see my sensor devices? Can I speak to the network and communicate back to say the MQTT broker? Um, and if none of that fails, so it might boot up but it might not have network connectivity or it might boot up and it might not be able to see all the sensors. And if it doesn't pass that health check, it then basically resets and, or a watchdog will trigger if it, it's not up by a particular time. Um, if it comes up and all the health check passes, it turns off the watchdog trigger. Um, but if it fails at any point in that, the watchdog will trigger and it will just boot back to the old working version. So in theory, um, we should be able to, um, we should be in a situation where we should never get a device that's bricked. Um, how that works in practice, time will tell but there's been a number of examples over the last couple of years where um, IoT manufacturers have sent out a poorly QA'd firmware and they've ended up with a million brick devices that they've had to sort of email customers and go, we're terribly sorry, can you please ship your device back so we can ship you out a working one? No more questions? Any? Yes, Dimitri. Uh, so anything, so the question is about upper layer stacks. So at the moment, um, the primary stack I'll be aiming for because it seems to have the most um, traction in the IoT space is Node-RED and, and we're working to get that. We have uh, Node.js 4 and a bunch of dependencies um, that Jared and Steve, uh, Jared Smith, Stephen Gallagher and others have been working on and that's landed in Fedora 24. Um, so that will be the initial stack we'll support um, but the idea is that we will probably run those stacks within Docker on the image so that you can basically s switch out. There's um, another group that are running a stack called I IOTivity um, which I mentioned um, yeah so this one here um, so the idea is that we can basically ha support a number of different stacks and, and you can basically just deploy whichever one um, you know suits your needs or you want to play with to keep it modular uh, what in your mind is the separation of the responsibilities between the underlying platform, Atomic plus pieces that will be running on Atomic under middleware and middleware stacks like that? It, it, it depends a lot on the deployment. Um, you wouldn't run something like Node-RED necessarily on the endpoint sensor devices. Um, in the case of but then, like, I mean, in my opinion, an IoT gateway is something that will bridge between a network of sensors. Um, and so you've got, um, like, in an industrial environment, they don't tend to use uh, wireless at all because it just gets destroyed with all the machinery and things like that. So they tend to run CAN buses or RS-485, things that they can run over um, shielded cables to ensure th that the data gets through. 
Um, so like an IoT gateway tends to be either from, you know, Bluetooth LE or um, Zigbee or one of the network stacks to IP. They don't tend to run like MQTT brokers or other um, stacks like that, although they can do some caching, but they tend to be quite small. And then you would get what I would tend to call a middleware or um, messaging gateway, which is an IoT specific that you ran it, run in a data center um, to potentially process the output of that to inject it into something like Elasticsearch or, or some platform to enable you to do statistics and, and data and stuff like that. So from like an IoT gateway tends to be like a six low pan to IPv6 network sort of almost router as opposed to running a massive middleware stack on it. gateway itself? Well, um, so the question was, would we stream everything into the data center? Um, define a data center. I mean, in a home network where you might have a bunch of temperature centers, sensors adjusting the heating, um, you probably wouldn't need a data center at all because the devices talk to each other and you would run a simple MQTT broker on that gateway device, but you wouldn't necessarily run an entire middleware stack on the gateway device. Um, in, in the case of a large industrial factory, um, there would probably be a data center that's running that factory of some description on site. Um, or if it's a network, or if it's large multinational corporation, um, it, it depends on the use case. Um, hi, I would like to ask uh, uh, what uh, uh, containers do you, do you plan to release together uh, with the first, first release uh, of Atomic Fedora? I suppose some kind, maybe uh, you have mentioned uh, some uh, stacks like Node-RED, but uh, there be there something like a tools container or, or similar, similar things? Um, in the first release for F24, there may not be any. It may be just a base image with the ability to manipulate a bunch of sensors, um, you know, some MQTT clients, um, and, and uh, so ultimately open to discussion, open to people who are interested in doing things. Um, there's a lot of different projects out there, and the idea is to be flexible. Um, also have to be realistic. I was hoping to get this working a year ago and with day job and life and various other bits and pieces, um, it, it's taken me longer than planned. So my plan for Fedora 24 is to get a relatively stable, robust base image with support for um, hardware and network interfaces and things like that and, and then see how far we get in Fedora 24, and then build on it from there. Thanks. Um, so I think that's it. Um, those of you that asked questions and would like a scarf, feel free to come up to the front um, and, and grab one from me. Thank you. I would also encourage you to vote for lighting talks in this section and please uh, come in time to presentations during the breaks. Thanks.
Jedna, dva, tři, zkouška rozhlasu. OK, tak to asi.
Hello, hello.